Welcome back. Well, today is Sunday. Sunday is Project Day. But we're going to do something a little different today. Today we have three separate projects. They are three quick and easy, down and dirty projects that can save you a little bit of time and effort and perhaps put a little extra beauty into your lives. But none of them is actually worth a full video on its own, so I'm combining them together. So today, three mini projects, and we'll get to it when we come back. from our dear friends from Portugal. And once again, for those of you who are not familiar with this book, who are new to the videos, the book is English as she is spoke. It was written by a couple of Portuguese gentlemen who in fact did not speak English as she is spoke or otherwise. Nevertheless, they took it upon themselves to write a Portuguese English phrase book for the benefit of their fellow Portuguese folks traveling abroad in English-speaking countries. And this section is uh, uh, Idiotisms and Proverbs, very aptly named um, Idiotisms. How did they come up with that? All right, let's see what our new Idiotisms are. He has the tongue very free. He is more in debt, but he weighs. He is a good devil. He don't know where give with the head. I upon the night, all cats are gray. The stone as roll, not heap up, not foam. Every country has their uses. They shirt him the door in face. With the time come one S to the end of all. Big head, little sens. That's S-E-N-S. He has fond the knuckle of the business. Words and feathers, the wind carry them. He turns as a weath turcockle. That's T-U-R-C-O-C-L. No idea what it is. A barber shave another. Belly famished has no ears. Too good appetite is not want any sauce. And apparently the reverse of that is, there is not better sauce who the appetite. The pains come at horse and turn one's self at foot. It is not for you that the oven is heated. To force to forge becomes smith. Now I have to admit, I have no idea what any of these mean, none whatsoever. But I'm quite certain if in 1855 you had a copy of this book and you were traveling around America, you would have just been the hit of the social season. All right, let's start with this project. Remember this lamp? I popped a shade on it. I said, well, you know, this is a good shape shade for this lamp, but of course, it's not the right size. Now let's just take it down a minute so you can see it. There you go. The issue is not the size of the shade. The issue is the size of the harp. And this is the harp. And when I did this, I did not have the original harp for this lamp that had fallen off in the back of Jocelyn's car. And interestingly enough, I coincidentally ran into Jocelyn a few days ago when I was at Target. And she was at Target too. It's just, uh, Carlisle is not a very big place. This sort of thing happens all the time. And here is the original harp. 
Now, if you will recall, I told you it had absolutely the wrong finial. So let me just show you a picture of what it looked like with this heart and finial on the lamp. So take a look. All right, this finial, I thought, because I never actually took it out of the bag, it had fallen off in Jocelyn's car, so I didn't really examine it closely. I thought it was polished brass. Oh, it's way worse than polished brass. This is brass-colored plastic. This is, I don't even know what I'm going to, <sighs> brass-colored plastic. I don't have words to express my contempt for this. You know how I love finials. There are some very nice plastic finials, and I've shown you some. I have some beautiful celluloid finials that are sitting on my lamps. This would not be one of them. I'm going to give that to Jocelyn, and she may be able to use that for uh, a resale lamp. Um, you know, hopefully it'll go to somebody who actually has their own nice finial. But now here is the original heart for this lamp. It's shorter than this one, um, as you can see. So let's just pop this on now. All right, now, I need to shift this over because actually I'm going to turn this around because it was sitting back a little and I don't think that suited it. Oh, gee. Lamp's not so inappropriately sized for the shade now, is it? All we did was change the harp. Now here's the new finial for the lamp, as you can see. Blue and white porcelain, just like the lamp. I have a few more of these in my finial box because the Chinese love blue and white. And so I got several Chinese blue and white finials knowing that they would come in handy. Now, I've already tried this finial on this harp, and what I need to do to make sure it fits is I need to add a washer, and you've seen these before, and then this. This is a little piece of felt. Uh, you just go to Michael's, you get a square of felt. I think it's about a one-foot square. It costs about a dollar. This happens to be a brown one because I think brown is less conspicuous against the brass. We're just going to put that on. And then we're going to pop our finial on. And between the, uh, the metal washer, that was a steel washer actually, and our little belt washer, that's going to take up all the slack and give me a nice fit when I screw this finial on so that it actually does what it's supposed to do, which is hold the shade in place. Now, here we go. Okay. This, this time the shade is not a problem for the lamp. It actually, in my opinion, looks very good. Now, of course, I'm going to want to adjust that a little, which I can do now that the finial is properly fitting on it. Before you toss out your lampshades or go to the trouble of replacing the lampshade with another lampshade, because keep in mind, lampshades are expensive. Lamp harps are not. I get most of my lamp harps by buying cheap damaged lamps at thrift stores. I take them home, I take the finials, I will take them apart for parts and pieces. <coughs> I have a lamp that I might in fact cannibalize to get a cord for this because this is a white cord that I really don't think suits the lamp. But see, voila. How fast and easy was that? We didn't have to change the shade. We just had to change the harp. So that's what you need to keep in mind. You need the right lamp, the right shade, but you also need the right harp. And of course, we shouldn't forget the finial because our little pseudo brass plastic friend, well, like I say, I will probably give him to Jocelyn in case she has some sort of resale lamp that she could use him for. Other than that, it would simply go in the trash that is just worthless. 
So that was quick and easy project number one. So now we're going to take a look at project number two. I'm going to pause for a moment, get that set up, and we'll be right back. Well, here comes project number two. Flowers. Now, I have a lot of flowers. I actually have a line item in my household budget for flowers. That got there in part when I guess I got into my 50s and my friend's parents began passing away. And at that point, I realized I actually had to budget for floral arrangements to send to friends for the funerals of their parents. And there was a time when that was actually a pricey enough thing. It happened with enough frequency so that I had to start considering budgeting for it and not just doing it on the fly anymore. But I also have to admit, I like having flowers. Now, as you all know, I recently went into the hospital. Um, I had knee replacement surgery. For those of you who have inquired, I'm doing great. I am going to be back to walking five miles a day by the end of the year if it kills me, and it might, but I intend to do it because I really miss being able to walk like that. But I'm doing very well. I'm at the point where I really don't even need my cane anymore. This is fantastic. But because I was in the hospital, a lot of people sent flowers, and then as soon as I got out, my little dog passed away. And so more people sent flowers very kind of them all, so I am grateful. But I want to keep those flowers for sentimental reasons. And on top of that, I have vases everywhere you look. This, for example, is a beautiful vase that Jocelyn got for me, I think, two Christmases ago. It's a gorgeous antique rose medallion piece. It's over 100 years old. She got a fantastic deal on it. Drew was very unhappy when she told me how much she paid, but trust me, that bargain really made it even more special to me because she got a great deal on it. I'm so pleased. I love it all the more for that. This is terrific. So this is a piece that is not going to sit in a cabinet somewhere. I love my vases. I do not want them locked away in cabinets or on top of closet shelves. I want them out. I want them in use, and I want them in use whether or not I am going to go out that week and just buy a bunch of flowers or not. So the answer to that is preserving the flowers I get. So these are just some roses and baby's breath in a little vase. And roses dry beautifully, as do baby's breath. However, if you let them dry in the vase, this is what they look like. They look like little shepherd's crooks because they're little tiny rose heads just flip over. And I'm not saying these are un unuseful, but when you compare it to roses that have been properly dried, and these are just air dried, this, again, talking simple, no-brainer projects, you can see the difference. So let me show you a close-up picture of these flowers. Okay, and that's what we're going to look at doing. These are some other flowers that I recently received. Again, roses. So I've taken them and I've tied them together. This is just with a rubber band. You don't need anything fancy. The only thing I've done is I've staggered them so that the flower buds, uh, the petals, are not really touching each other. I have not even removed the leaves. The leaves will probably fall off all by themselves by the time they are dried. These have been drying for two or three days. At this time of year, it'll probably take no more than about a week. But by drying them upside down, the little rose heads will dry straight up instead of curving over like this. So these are going to go back on, I'll either hook them on the knob of a cabinet door 
or I will hook them on the pole for a ceiling fan. Um, I have to do that in an out-of-the-way spot, otherwise I bang my head into them all the time. And then once they go into the base like this, this is Aquanet hairspray. And you just spray it up. And that keeps them from crumbling or falling apart. This, by the way, is a trick I learned in college. And when I was in college, like everybody else in my college, I was required to take art courses. I know, blind woman taking art courses, what sense does that make? Well, because I figured I was basically at a disadvantage, I very quickly befriended the grad students in the art department and thought, oh yeah, I'm going to stick with them. They know more than I do. And one of them turned me on to this. She, she said that this was a quick and easy way to preserve pastel drawings, charcoal drawings, anything that you might want to apply a fixative to. And of course, art students are notorious for being poor. And it is cheap, really cheap, very readily available, Walmart, and it will do an excellent job. These flowers, which are about two years old, and the cat has nibbled on them quite a lot, are just about hitting the point where I'm considering replacing and upgrading them. That will happen with these. As these flowers begin to open, I'll keep an eye on them. As soon as they start to bang, bang, grab them, rubber band up on the ceiling fan, and they will eventually replace these. But these have lasted for two years. Super quick, super easy way to fill your vases and allow you, uh, which is what I do, to just keep them around your house with little flowers in here. This one, um, I will want a few more. In fact, these flowers are destined to go in and fill out this vase a little more. That's how I keep my vases in constant circulation. So they are around the house. Some of them will have, you know, gifts from kind friends and others just roses I may have bought myself. Roses and baby's breath are my favorite. As I say, they dry out beautifully. They dry out very easily. Um, so that is this project. And before we leave this project, very quickly, let me show you a picture of my late dog. That was Hannah and it was taken shortly before Halloween. She died uh, shortly before Halloween. And uh, she was in her little Halloween tutu. Uh, she loved clothing. That dog was nuts for clothes. Uh, she liked sweaters with bells on them so she could jingle. I think it had something to do with the cat, who knows. But uh, there she is. She, uh, she went suddenly and unexpectedly very peacefully in her sleep. So um, it was an awful thing to happen, but it happened the best way it could. Oh, she went the way I want to go. Just take a nap and don't wake up again. It, it, if it had to happen, it was the best way it could happen. But as I say, I want to save the, the, the gifts that people sent, the flowers, for sentimental reasons, and they will go into the vases. I will keep them you know, as long as I can. So. That is a way to A, preserve your flowers, especially those with sentimental value, keep your vases, your cups, your jars, your teapots, whatever you have that you can shove a flower in, in circulation in your home, get them out of the cabinets. Let's start using those beautiful things we have collected. Okay, now coming up next, project number three. Our final project for the day is one that I mentioned in a previous video. I told you how I did it, but I didn't show you. And I realized later I probably should have shown you. This is our 
salt shaker that has been converted to either a lamp finial or a little tidbit topper. Well, one of our viewers, Colleen Shaver, recognized this little guy when she saw this at an antique mall. She got it. She sent it to me. I am delighted because the last time I was out with Jocelyn, I got this little guy. Now, these two are not shakers. They don't have any holes in their heads. This guy, he is a really nice match for this little guy. He's a little bit taller, but it's clearly uh, the same sort of piece. And this little guy is a little bit smaller. He's a little heavier. But what makes them very good for this project is they all have holes in the bottom. So let me show you a close-up picture of all three of these together, side by side, along with the holes in the bottom. Okay, take a look. All right, now, in order to insert this little piece, and I've shown you these pieces before, this is called a reducer with shoulder. I get them from Grand Brass, and I actually put a link on one of my videos. I'm going to see if I can find that and put that link back on this video. It's a teeny weeny little piece about, let me see, get that on the tip of my finger, that big. The exterior portion is a quarter of an inch, the interior is an eighth of an inch, and it is designed to take large finials and reduce them down to the modern standard, which is one eighth of an inch. A lot of older finials are a quarter of an inch like this, and in previous videos I've shown you finials for lamps that are a quarter of an inch. But this little piece, simply by insetting it in the bottom, will turn this into a finial or a tidbit topper. Now with this little guy, his hole is just right. I can drop this piece in and it goes in, but the collar, the shoulder does not. And that's how you want it to go. You want the threaded section to drop in, but you want that shoulder to remain above the edge of the piece. Um, even though I'm going to embed this in hot glue, I still want that extra mechanical um, connection. I, I want it supported by that shoulder. Now, I know a lot of you don't like hot glue. I have a reason for using hot glue. Hot glue is only semi-permanent. Uh, I can pop this out. If I decide I want to turn this back into a salt shaker, I pop it out, I throw in a cork salt shaker. This little guy, however, his hole is sort of elongated and it's going to need to be carved out a little in order to fit our little shoulder in. So we're going to do that with the Dremel and we are using a bit. Now this is just a straight bit and it has diamond chips on the edges. You don't drill through with this. You put this into an existing hole and sort of grind out the edges of the hole. Now because this hole is pretty close to the size I want. And because the difference in size between the threaded portion, that's the portion that's going to go into the hole, and the shoulder piece, which is going to remain outside the hole, the difference in size between the two is very small. I'm going to carve this out in little tiny bits and test fit every step of the way because I want it just big enough to drop in, but not so big enough 
that the whole piece goes in there and then I have to fish it out. So this is going to be a little noisy, but it's going to be fast too. So do bear with me and remember this is a project video. So I got my old clothes and my safety glasses on. That's going to do it. Yes. See how quick and easy? Now you notice I did that in several quick short passes because I wanted to get it just big enough and I didn't want to overdo it. Now here's my glue and what I'm going to do with the glue is just pop a little around the edge so that I can embed this in the glue and that will do two things for me it will not only keep the piece in there this is not going to drop out but it's also going to create a little bit of a cushion between the metal and the porcelain i'm going to do that on this one as well Let me just drop it in. Done. It's seriously that easy. Now, since I don't have a Lampark handy, this is just a piece of a tidbit tray. Now, I know you're probably seeing a lot of um, hot melt glue string there. I will remove that later. But in the meantime, here we go. It'll work the same way on a lamp. This one will do the same. So that's how easy it is to turn something like this into a finial or a tidbit topper. Now, if you had something that didn't have a hole in the bottom, it didn't already if it were solid for example you would go through the same process you go through to create a tidbit tray and we've got plenty of videos on that you would just carve out a little space big enough to accommodate the entire um tidbit or the entire um uh, reducer so that you could drop it in um, you would, in effect, just be creating a little hole yourself. Very, very easy, super fast project. So that's what we have today. Three super quick projects. And, well, before we sign off, we have one little remaining piece of business. Our tidbit trays. We have two of these. We have two winners. The cat picked them. I'm not sure why he doesn't tell me anything. The first is Kelly Operud, Operud, Operud. O-P-P-E-R-U-D. Please forgive me for screwing up the pronunciation of your name, Kelly. 
and Bonnie Suggs, S-U-G-G-S. Kelly and Bonnie, you have won. I will list both your names in the notes under this video. Uh, you may get in touch by leaving a comment on the video, or you can shoot me an email at the pen giveaway address, and that is contained in the notes under the video. In the meantime, I wish you all a very pleasant day, and I'll see you tomorrow.